Fortunately, the amount of research on dyscalculia is still way behind of the research on dyslexia. Now. The genetic research shows that the genes that are associated with reading are often also the same genes that are associated with math. And what do these genes code for? Well, they code for proteins that are involved in brain development, right? So um, I think we've gone beyond these neat categories to appreciating that there's more continuum and that, th that these things are related to one another. What does it feel like to be a dyscalculic? I think probably young children are not so aware of it, but later on in life, they become aware that, you know, when it comes to very simple calculations, doing your budgets, that they're just really finding that difficult. The other thing that I think they'll increasingly experience is this feeling of falling behind their peers and that no matter how hard they work, it's very difficult to reach the same level of fluency, of understanding. So math just becomes this thing that uh, ideally they'd like to avoid, right? Because it isn't it isn't rewarding. It, uh, it's um, it's uh, it's something that may even lead to mathematics anxieties. I think also math anxiety has become a big topic of interest. And there, I think research shows that yes, students with dyscalculia are more likely to experience math anxiety, but you are also able to find students who are dyscalculic who have absolutely no math anxiety. So they're not the same thing. And that's important for classroom practice because a student that is anxious is not necessarily a student that has a math learning difficulty. Um, and that's very positive because then we can go in with other approaches that that focus more on their anxiety and how can we remove that anxiety from their learning context. I would say that having a math learning difficulty is not a sentence, it's, uh, it's a recognition of your neurodiversity, uh, but it also means that you need to advocate for yourself and especially with dyscalculia because with dyslexia we have so many resources, right? There's so much great work, there's so many good evidence-based approaches. I'm not saying it's easy being a dyslexic, but you have much more on offer to you. So be an advocate.